All right. Hello, everyone. I am uh, Austin Light with American Demon Comics. I am joined by Brandon from Dismay Comics. And we have with us today Katie, K-Pop Junkie, the, the indie comic market just mascot girl here. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to to promoting indie comics or <clears throat> interviewing indie creators i think you might be the top in terms of the volume like like you were doing interviews like a lot compared to i mean like i i love other youtubers and stuff yeah. as well but like most youtubers it's like once a week we'll we'll yeah. interview someone or talk about their kickstarter but katie's like on it basically i need a break i'm doing too many <laughs> <laughs> i'm always going to my my uh page ever since i started following you and it's yeah. like k-pop junkies and scheduled in in three hours k-pop junkie just did one you know. seven hours ago k-pop junkie doing one in two minutes you know, I'm like, Damn. i know i so I started off doing once a week with my regular series, The Fartest Feature. And I did that. No, I started off doing that like once every two months. And then it just kind of blew up when I went to Comic-Con last year. And then I got that was, that stream got so popular, I had to separate the campaign people from the regular people. So that's how I started kicking it with K-pop. And then since then, mm -hmm. it kind of just exploded. And I never would have thought in a million years I'd have like people reaching out to me, hey, I want to be on your show or whatever. I'm like, I've been following yeah. you for like a million years. Like, <laughs> this is amazing. Like, let's go. Nice. Yeah. What's yeah. what's uh, like? Uh, what are you you scheduled out to right now? Like a typical Katie is scheduled to here essentially. Uh, I'm booking into August September right now. Oh wow. Yeah. I know, because when we did our, what did, what did we do? Like, what was that, September, October when we did the show, but we booked it, like, April, I think, yeah, last year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, a big part of that for me was, like, uh, every, and I learned this, like, my first or second Kickstarter with reaching out to anyone. I was reaching out two, three months in advance sort of thing, and, and you were one of the first people I reached out to with Tales from Town City, because I remember... At some point, whenever I was buying costumes, I think <laughs> for for cons and stuff, you had mentioned, "Ooh, like yes. we need to dress up like this." And I was like, "Oh, like let's go ahead and schedule it." Rusty Hook is ready for a return. Let's <laughs> go. Yeah. That's the thing is, like, I I want to do. I, I might do one or two more conventions this year. I want to do more like dressing as Hypno Ray. Yes. The issue is, I need to get that dry cleaned or get like Clorox wipes to clean the inside of the sleeves because I've done some cons in August and September Ooh. and that, that sweat, I, I, I don't like it. I need, I need it clean. What you want you to do is just make an inner lining that you can remove just for the sleeves and then change that oh, out. Yeah. That's a yeah. good idea. I'll clean it. And then, yeah, I'll just put that, that inner yeah. lining mesh where I can just cheap thing, take it out. Honestly, I, I just want to go cheap, take it out, throw it away. Yes. I hate grossness. And then I can just put a new one in. There's so many fabrics, especially at Joanne's. You just go get the remnants that are like a dollar, yeah, yeah, $2. Yeah. And then you get like the silky ones. So it's nice and yeah. nice and fresh <laughs> and airy. I'll, I'll do that. Then I'll feel more Sanitize. More comfortable <laughs> and sanitized in doing it more. Because before I would do it like one day, because one, it'd be too hot. And then yeah. two, it's like after so many cons, it's like, I don't like the way this feels. So, yeah. Even in the winter months when you wear a cosplay or you're wearing like a heavier outfit, it gets so sweaty inside those buildings that you're like, all right, I'm ready to take this off. Sometimes I want to even put makeup on when I go to them. So I'm like, nope, it's already melted off when I walk out the door. So. But yeah, uh, I too want to go to more cons this year and I want to go to cons outside of the state again. I haven't done that in a while and uh, I really want to looking forward to some of those, especially like the horror conventions. I love the horror conventions. My favorite. You say out of state, like like Canada or? Actually, Canada is 20 minutes for me. So I can easily go to oh. Windsor and Toronto is about a five hour drive. So that's no problem at all. But uh, I started out going to cons in DC in Maryland that's where I was kind of living at the time. And then I kind of moved back over here, started doing that. And I've been to some in Ohio and a couple of other ones, but yeah, I would love to go to here was next year. There's some horror cons in California. I would love to go to, I hear some good things all over the place. So, you know, looking forward to that. 
Wait, you're muted. Your mic is muted. <laughs> Hopefully you weren't talking this entire time. <laughs> no, I I'm, I tried to interject like once, but I was like, oh, they can talk. Um, if only we could get her down to South Alabama. <laughs> yes, where, the, where the great conventions are. And no, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about like I'm not throwing shade at any convention particularly. I'm just saying there's not a lot of convention. No. Uh, I will I, gladly I met, go there. Let me tell you. Yes, let's go. I'm I met up for Austin traveling at a convention in in South Alabama, mm -hmm. but I, I live in this area. Austin has Austin's a little more fortunate than me. He lives in North Alabama. There's yeah. at least the Huntsville type stuff, and he's kind of near the Georgia and Tennessee. I'm, area. Yeah, I'm in between Nashville, yeah. Memphis, Atlanta, um, Birmingham. Oh, okay. So you're, it's not a, a bad good area. Spot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm buy... in a garbage at? area. <laughs> <laughs> Mister, Mister, I'm living on the beach. I got a beachfront. <laughs> no, no, that's the thing. <laughs> Don't even get me started there. <laughs> Cause I, I don't even like, like Navarre, <laughs> Florida is where I live. And it's like, for what you pay to live here, it's not worth it at all. <laughs> like I'm, I'm maybe 10 minutes away from the beach. Sure. I don't care about the beach. Uh... The big thing is, is like, there's nothing to do in this city mm -hmm. or in this town. You have to go 30 minutes this way to another town or 45 minutes to Pensacola to do stuff like, and yet you're paying like, destined florida prices where people like retire you're paying that and it's like this place sucks i want to move so bad <laughs> there's nothing to do where would you move if you're going to be moving anywhere um honestly and this like this isn't like a uh uh i'm i'm coming to to stalk austin sort of thing. i thought about this for a while i would love to live in huntsville like the outskirts okay. of huntsville i i do really enjoy huntsville mm -hmm. that'd just be a awesome. little bit of everything Control. Oh yeah, then YouTube would be up to prime time shenanigans all the time. <laughs> me and my me and my girlfriend would um if we had like anywhere that we could go live, it would be on the outskirts of Memphis. Um okay. but I have two kids. Um and until both of them are probably in their mid twenties, I'm gonna be here. Uh so but Huntsville's pretty good. Um got lots of of like hubs. So like there's this place um, called the stove house and like around the stove the stove house is like just a ton of like new restaurants, hangout places, stuff like that. We got low mill. That's low uh, mill was really cool. The uh, art studio place where it was once a mill and they have transferred uh, all the Ooh. rooms and renovated it into like a bunch of art studios. So okay. just dozens of art mm -hmm. studios that people were in out. You know, that's that's really popular. They did that here. They took the old city hall and they rented it into a artist housing community. So all the people that live there are current either artists because we have really big art schools downtown where people come from all over the world to go for like the automotive designing. And oh, yeah. it's, it's called the uh, Center for Creative Studies. And they built that. So what they do to like it's the rent is like kind of not really low income, but it's like on a program like that. And then they do like yeah. um, the other half of it is where they go and they do art fairs and stuff. So they sell their work and whatever they work, they get a proceed to stay there in their house. And there's a lot of communities like that that are happening up in old uh, like town halls, like all over the States, which is, I find amazing. I got to look into that. Cause I remember about a year ago and I've seen this in other countries, but I was also trying to see, in the states there are grants slash programs where you apply and you as well as like like dozen other people get to stay in this house for four to six weeks sort of thing um and it, it's very artist centered there's there's things for writers there's things for for artists and i was looking into that but like i, I wouldn't mind the program thing it seems more <laughs> likely to get in if i'm paying yeah. Uh, uh, compared to the other thing where it's like, it's free. So everyone's applying to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think that's awesome that there's more and more programs out there for artists and writers and creative people, because there's a lot of schools that are getting rid of that. And I think yeah. it's highly important that people are creative, have a creative outlet, because 
I know like, you know, depression, anxiety and all that stuff. Like that is a massive way for me to deal with all that when I can just focus on artwork and pieces of stuff like that, or just watch a movie. And I really appreciate the art styles and effects in there. So I, yeah, it's highly important that people get creative people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, uh, when I went to the community college here, not far, it was like 45 minutes away from here. Um, Sneed, they, uh, their art facility was a, no, it was two classrooms. Um, they were pretty large classrooms, but they were in the basement of the cafeteria. <laughs> So that was the art art building. <laughs> if you were going to do art at Sneed, you were always going to be in the basement of the cafeteria. Um, and I just found that so typical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's so sad because, like, uh, not even thinking on a collegiate level, like after grade school level, but grade school itself. Like, my mom, for, like, two decades plus taught art <clears throat> like she was an art teacher for kindergarten through 12th grade and like not just through her experience but also just knowing other art teachers and and various community members like that but just seeing like the arts when, whenever whenever they're talking about budget cuts in terms of, of budgeting out supplies and stuff for classes and stuff, the number, the first ones that get cut are music and art mm -hmm. in terms of let's give them the lowest budget or let's just take this out of the school because we don't have the money yeah. for it. Right. Um, and it's, it's so sad, like, because I'm imagining you take it, at least I took it for granted back in grade school, but I'm imagining a school where it's literally it, it's math history science uh uh can't even remember the other subjects uh, uh <laughs> lunch lunch was a good one i like that one. lunch was <laughs> great yeah recess i missed that that was fun <laughs> oh i i yeah middle school and high school need recess i petition yeah that. i also um, petition this yes let's get that started yeah yeah but uh but if it's just those classes, and there's nothing wrong with that. I actually really liked history uh, uh, all throughout high school. Um, and, and I learned stuff through science. Math, all of the math classes in high school, I think, are stupid. I don't think everyone needs to take that. <laughs> That's my own opinion, though. Um, but if you took the arts out, if you took out music, if you took out art, and, and art is so many other subcategories there's ceramics there's 2d 3d there's this there's that if you take all that out it's just it, it sounds it almost just sounds like like this might not be the the best phrasing but almost just like a communist school where you're just throwing your mm -hmm. kids in essentially mm -hmm. yeah uh there's a lot of parents that are so gung-ho about you have to learn you have to study you have to you have to be a kid as well you have to have fun. Mm -hmm. You have to do things because that is going to enrich your life well past the school. Because oh, I can yeah. tell you right now, when I went to school, we had computers in, in, in school, but it was all DOS based. When I was in ninth grade, we still had typewriting class in ninth grade. Then we jumped to <laughs> Microsoft Works. And then I think by the time I was leaving, we, we didn't even, we just got internet and we had Gateway 2000, <laughs> Gateway 99 <laughs> 2000. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so the amount of stuff that has happened in school since then, I remember a lot of things, but I can tell you right now, I can tell you a lot of my math stuff. I don't do math like that on a daily basis at all. Mm -hmm. Like none of that makes sense, but uh, creative classes that stuck with me forever. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, you uh, essentially the way you describe it, Brandon, is, is it is it is once you take away the art classes and music classes, um, things of that nature, it really does just become what it was trying to be, which is an institution. I feel that like a, an artist, artistic, um, um, hub for an institution is kind of something like an anti institution. And maybe that's why, why it's so underfunded and, and underappreciated. 
um, is because it's, you know, an institution has its place as a uh, place to be a, a building block for all that learning and everything and, and being able to be on a schedule and learn basics, learn, um, you know, language and mathematics and uh, the basics of history and everything like that. And art is just like, there are basics to it, but it's like, it's just so, I got to tear at the, the brim of this, of this institution. I've got to like break out of this institution. It's got to be free. It wants to come out of, out of the box, you know? Yeah, so yeah. like there are, there are principles in art that like you'll likely learn in at least your first art class in high school. And maybe some after that, if the funding's bad and the art teacher's like, Hey, sorry, here's the textbook. Let's do definitions in an art class. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it's like what you said, Austin. It's, it, it's, there are principles, but then it's, you go from mm -hmm. there. It's whatever you want to do with those principles. If you even cared or listened to those principles. <laughs> yeah. um, whereas the other subjects, your sciences, your maths, you have mm -hmm. to follow those principles. You have to mm -hmm. listen to those principles to build on that and keep building on that. Um, another thing too, is that, you know, there's problem, there's, more institution above that institution it just keeps piling on and it likes to have that ever growing ever um assertive you know tech that's that seems to be prevalent right now um and something that uh i one of the one of the attributes that i enjoyed that about jordan peterson always repeating was that um a a business ran off of of a conservative and a liberal mindset. If you get rid of one of the two, it doesn't work. Like you can't, because the conservative mindset really wants to get that um, safe uh, and safe money, easy bets, easy, you know, like and structured, very well organized, very well, you know institutional while your liberal arts or liberal more minded kind of person wants to kind of be more open kind of wants to throw more adventure into the uh into the business get it creative um i think more along the lines he says it takes it takes one of those uh a more liberal mindset to make and 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 create an entrepreneurship um but once they get bored with it you know, they establish it for con a conservative mind to kind of run it and then they want to move on to the next thing. So I guess you could say it's easy to see how these uh, entities will just kind of run themselves into the ground eventually. But it's also, you know, like I said, institu institution on top of institution. It's trying to, it's like that funding just kind of goes down the ladder and the arts aren't as appreciated uh as a result which is a shame because <laughs> like it, one of the things you see is like like extracurricular stuff you see sports and most schools sports is funded pretty well it, rightfully so to most of the time um but like you have sports then you have your your math, science, a little bit of history. History kind of gets cut. Um, you have that, and then yeah, it's it's just like here's here's the leftovers, <laughs> if there are any leftovers. Here you go, uh, uh, music slash band. Like here's five hundred dollars for the year for you to buy instruments for five hundred dollars. Same thing with art. Here's two hundred and fifty bucks to last you the whole year. Yeah, good luck. Have you ever bought art supplies for one person? Come on. No. <laughs> exactly. I watched it with five hundred dollars, uh, which is also one of my favorite movies. Uh, is Here Comes the Boom. It's one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. Uh, if you don't know it, <laughs> what's that guy's name? Oh my god. Uh, uh, they're James. in a school, and the music the music is class is getting. Uh, they're gonna get rid of it, so he goes and uh, becomes a UFC fighter to earn money to keep the music department. <laughs> so good <laughs> and that that just made me think like i 
because like not only did my mom teach for so long and I know teachers and stuff, I also subbed for, for three or four years. Um, I, I see like, uh, uh, because there's such little help and funding from the school for music and art, there are so many people that come to volunteer their time and sometimes their money in terms of bake sales yeah. or this or that or whatever that aren't affiliated with the school that aren't a part of the school. It's just a parent or, or someone who isn't a parent, but sees the benefit of these programs and their, School ain't doing crap. I'll go ahead and say it. Yeah. School ain't doing crap. <laughs> These people mm -hmm. who don't, who shouldn't have to do this are taking their time and money and putting into it when it's something the school should be doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And most teachers don't get paid the amount that they should for what they have to deal with on a daily basis. And even when I was growing up, I would say the art departments, the music departments, those teachers put in more of their earnings back into the students and back oh, yeah. into the programs that they are supporting than the school would even imagine doing for any of oh, them. Yeah. And that's, you could tell that those teachers are very passionate about what they do and they really like why they're there. So mm -hmm. as opposed yeah. to some I other teachers. <laughs> I 100% agree with that. Not just my mom, but I've seen it yeah. with other art teachers as well as music teachers. I've seen exactly what you said, Katie, of, yeah. They're putting like whatever the school gave them, they're putting probably at least three times that amount of their own money into it for the whole year. Like that's their money, mm -hmm. but yeah. they're, they want it to be more successful than, Oh, here's 300 bucks. Uh, that, that should give you copy paper and crayons. <laughs> <for you. laughs> not so much copy paper, not definitely not legal yeah. paper. Let me tell you, that's, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Just the arts are just, it's just a really vast when you think about it, how many different types of arts, music, even now, like there's new forms of art popping up all the time. Like you have like 3D craft printing. So many people are getting into cosplay and craftsmanship. I love oh, seeing yeah, that. Yeah. And it's it's fascinating. So I, I, I'm excited when like new things pop up. I love learning stuff. I will go to the store and find something and take it apart and then figure out how to make it myself because I just love learning how to do like artsy things. That's how I learned how to do most of the stuff in my house. I learned how to do plushies. Well, that's, that's the thing in terms of art, the arts in school. I would love to see it. Might not ever happen. Maybe it will. The way it's looking probably won't. I would like to see more investment into the arts from government, school, stuff like that. Because yeah. it's like what you said. You have all these new, not entirely new forming uh, uh, versions of art, but these things that are now being popular, popularized in art. You have cosplay. Like that's, that's its own thing. It is sculpture, but it's very yeah. different. So, mm -hmm. so like that's something like getting these kids into this sort of stuff like this there's i see at cons like like teenagers all the time like in cosplay and stuff and this isn't a bash against the art teacher it's more against the the school as a whole i doubt they had any help from any school stuff it was literally mm -hmm. at home i'm yeah. youtubing this and stuff um which is great it's great to see that independent creativity but to have someone help that help plant the seed or or help that grow in what is essentially the institution that we have of school because you have that and then nowadays i don't know how many schools are are implementing slash helping with digital art because that's such a big thriving thing um i think traditional art definitely needs to stay but yeah. I think there's there's not enough help and funding in the digital art section of it. I actually had um, somebody come up to me when I was at the Wicked Fun Fest last Saturday that was a local teacher. And he was like, oh, wow, you did all this stuff. And I was like, yeah. He's like, man, I would need I need to have you come up and help show the kids how how you kind of do digital stuff uh, so awesome. that they can kind of learn some some techniques from somebody that's in the field and i kind of was 
I kind of laughed under my breath being heard as in the field because <laughs> you know i'm like technically i am but you're in the field. i don't know <laughs> um you just gotta dial back uh uh some of the gore and stuff <laughs> no amp it up <laughs> yeah <laughs> um I did get to do a little lecture at my old college or at my university last year and they'll they'll have me back ne- this upcoming year and I love doing that and it's oh, it's nice. a great way to stay in touch with the professors and then also um be able to like kind of show uh, a different path for for these upcoming students because um when I was going to conventions 10 years ago and I'd go hear a panel of a voice actor. Um, It was, it was kind of a thought in my brain to get started in voice acting because that seemed pretty fun. Um, And you got to hear all these voice actors talk and they always have like just these wild off the wall, different ways that they got into voice acting. There was just, just not the only thing consistent with somebody saying that they got into voice acting was they said, I recorded in my closet that's the only <laughs> consistent thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, there's there's some in, I think there's some interest from the teachers to try and and bring in um, some exposure to to digital art. Uh, just, I think that they have to. I mean, you you, yeah, you, yeah. you have to like start learning that stuff. That's I had the thing is I I think there's interest in by teachers for sure mm-hmm. the big thing is funding that sort of stuff funding the the pads the the ipads or whatever the heck they're drawing on funding the computers and stuff for the art so, room something interesting though now that i think of it is in high school i had um a business media two class so business media one was microsoft office <laughs> business media two they got us into illustrator and photoshop and um, stuff like that to do some simple exercises and simple things. Um, and, you know, that was like graphic design 101, basically. I learned a lot um, in in that class, but they, ca- they called it business media or media something, you know, um, and it wasn't anywhere associated, you know, in, in your class you, uh, brochure or whatever you're looking at. Um, that it was, you know, tied into art. Um, although, you know, my counselors were, were smart enough to put me in that, but uh, I wouldn't have thought anything of it. Oh, that's so we just need, we just need the loophole names for the, <laughs> yeah. the grade school classes. I mean, this is, this is business media. This is, <laughs> this is, I would have taken tie that. into the math and science somehow. Mm-hmm. I love math. I would have taken that in heartbeat. I think uh, <laughs> when we finally got computers. We were all vying to do MS Paint art. <laughs> my day, so. uh, Which I still yes. rock. Uh, but there's a lot of really good free programming that you get, like dig- yeah, for yeah. digital programs that are way better than the stuff that you pay a ton of money for. And like, um, I still use MS Paint to this day. I love it. Uh, I would say at least for like a starting out class, like yeah. MS Paint for sure. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, and pretty most people, which is interesting. So, like in my grade school, only the richest of richest people, because it was all DOS based stuff, had like the computers, and then like started getting more and more popular, like in high school. But like after that, in like the two thousands, is kind of when that blew up. So pretty much everybody either has a laptop or a phone nowadays. Just, we didn't have yeah. any of that <laughs> back here. Stone Age, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, well, like when I was leaving middle school, we had um, this class that was an intro to like computers and stuff. And it, I think it was called modules or something. Modules. And every week or yeah, I think it was just a semester of a class. And every week you rotated modules. And uh, there was one for like glamour and like, uh, you know, like doing makeup and hair. And then there was one for like video games. Um, so like really, really basic, like texturing uh, a wall on in a video game, putting in a light bulb uh, in a setting or something like that. 
and that was really you know fascinating again it was like a very artist you know thing hidden in this rudimentary like computer class as i was saying my computer class was not like that at all <laughs> <laughs> we learned how to how to how to properly type to help us at type the home row even though even though <laughs> i didn't stick with that i now have my own <laughs> funky way of typing yeah i still think it's faster oh, you know i, <laughs> I click and clack clack depending on if i yeah. have nails or not we're going boop, boop, yeah, boop, boop. Yeah. They, they taught you where to put your specific fingers on which key yeah. so that it's easier to reach each key and all that that's like no i'm gonna no. use yeah. these three fingers the <laughs> yeah. most no, no, no. Yeah. yeah it's like guitar um, hero i never really used these two fingers that much i just kept going up and down <laughs> on the strum. listen gaming is also amazing for that you get the dexterity in your thumbs mm -hmm. and plus you get you know all the carpal tunnel early yeah. from that so let's go but uh yeah no which is another thing too your hands, if you're a traditional artist or doing art, your my hands are warped from how I hold a pencil traditionally. So if I go to write something, my handwriting is chicken scratch because I don't hold the pencil normally <laughs> when I go to go write things. So I'm like, ah, oh, screw up. I was like, wow, are you a doctor? I'm like, no. <laughs> I get that no. all the time because I'm left-handed and I also have off the hand, right? Because I hold the pencil. If I had yeah. anything, I don't have anything on me, but <laughs> I essentially hold the pencil, get my earphone case with like four of my fingers, and I'm just writing like this how, essentially. How do do this? It looks very weird. I don't know. What? How do you do this? I, what? <laughs> I don't know, but it's it's chicken scratch. The plus side uh, for me is anytime I need to write a letter or something, it's okay if I do it digitally. <laughs> That's what helps I don't know what it is too about social media. This is weird. I am well proficient in reading and writing. Like what? When I, but you have to go to do a little blurby thing. No, I spaz out and I'm like, uh, hot dogs. And I don't know what the hell to put. I'm like, I don't know why I did that. I'm like, I don't know, but whatever. Just send the stupid thing. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. I was going <laughs> to see dive in a little bit to to uh, your origins, um, Katie, because okay. you're usually diving into other people's origins and yes. and what you know makes them in this world. So, Katie, what what are how did you go from K-pop junkie as a username? It sounds like you're you're. It sounds like you were going to be more devoted to K-pop uh, originally. Um, how did this morph into interviews? And uh, this is the first name I ever made online, and I've had it over twenty years. <laughs> I'm an OG K-pop person. Yes. Okay, so, so you were a K-pop fan. 20 30 plus years, years ago, ago wow in high school anyone in the I, states yeah. cared about it yeah i my goal in high school was to open an asian media store to sell anime this is the 90s anime and korean music and japanese j-rock that's what i wanted to do wow. in high school in high school yes uh the days of media play where you were paying 30 dollars for a 20 minute vhs tape uh, yeah, no, I was like, yeah, let's do it. You know how billionaire I would have been right now if I would have stuck with that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it. Never too late. Uh, yeah, no, that's what I want to do in high school. So uh, uh, my brother and I were huge into anime in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you so, have so like... Oh, what? I'm sorry. I was going to see, I was going to ask, did you like in, in school have a click that like, were also familiar with K-pop like specifically, uh, and, and, or was it like, cause kind of like the Asian like market click. <laughs> like we were So we had, I kind of went in school in the ghetto. We had, there was one Asian person in our school, but they didn't really listen to K-pop, but her brother did. So I was like, I know all the songs. And he was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I have an, yeah so but uh nobody in my school knew k-pop nobody i was the only person that knew k-pop they knew japanese music and j-pop because anime openings because that was kind of started getting popular where they were just showing like dragon ball and sailor moon a little bit on tv and maybe a couple of the other ones but uh yeah so that was kind of big and then 
back in that day, there was an international channel. Every Sunday, they would air all the Japanese and Korean television. So every Sunday, you would get the Cell Saga <laughs> from Dragon Ball. Unsummed, by the way. We didn't know what the heck was going on. We were like, oh, this is awesome. So we would, used to watch that. And then they would do a music show afterwards. So that's how we kind of got our knowledge you're of that. just like if only everybody would have known <laughs> they were missing out they something. were missing out yeah so I'm also yeah. imagining I got back that. then a channel dedicated to international stuff that obviously at that time didn't have dubbing yet but no, no. subbing so yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> subbing. No. The, the plus side with dragon ball is you don't yeah. really need sub that much no. there's only a couple yeah. seasons slash episodes that you need it like like the 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 yeah. great say a man saga that little yeah. season you kind of need to hear what they're saying there other than yeah. that you're good uh, honestly 99 percent of dragon will make zero sense <laughs> you're just watching it at this point for whatever's happening in the fight scenes but yeah uh yeah. uh yeah so yeah so <laughs> that's how i started k-pop was k-pop junkie back then All i also right. took the e off of junkie because i was like i am not addicted to anything it's just k-pop so i removed the junkie which is interesting because so many people are trying to get my username because there's a lot of people in k-pop named junkie <laughs> they spell it like that uh. so they're trying to get my name which is hilarious <laughs> And I'm like, Amazing. nope, sorry, I'm the OG one. But uh, yeah, so that's how I started that. <laughs> uh, I've always went into comics and I've been doing my own art streams probably 17 years now. So I started on a whole bunch of channels that are now uh, closed. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, and then I moved to Justin TV, which was is Twitch at the moment. And then I took a break from that. Oh, and then yeah. I went, yeah, I, I took a break from that. That I went back and I kind of got really popular on there doing my art, but because of my anxiety and stuff, I never showed my face on there. I just showed my art. I uh, took a break from it to move to YouTube, and I was like, I just want to get rid of my comics. <laughs> it's eight boxes at the time. I was like, I want to get rid of the ones I don't want. I want to clean a copy, maybe preserve one. That's pretty decent. So I figured out how I found some channels that were comic related in there. That got me back into comics. <clears throat> now I have over 30 boxes of the comics. Didn't get rid of a single one. <laughs> and, uh, oops. which, yeah, oops. Uh, which then led me to uh, have my face on uh, some late night stuff. Because if you don't know, a couple of years ago, I got into the auction scene. And then Tricky and I were doing late night radio back in the day. It was called Dairy Air Radio. We all had perverted cheese names. Uh, <laughs> So that was our late night show that kind of got me more into comics and then he branched off because he was also doing art but he branched off to do whatnot and uh i kind of stayed in the community and then last year because my show my show is not even well it is a year old now but uh <laughs> uh i bought a krampus riding lobo uh cover online and i wanted to show it off so that's how i started my farthest future show which is my well, it was the main one until the kick in with K-pop took off. But uh, yeah, that's why I started my my show on YouTube. So and okay. I, I, I think it's absolutely hilarious that people watch me for comics and I have nothing to do with comics in my name. <laughs> <laughs> I need that it's, one indie creator to make a K-pop comic. Yeah. Then then it'll all tie together. I'm uh, Listen, if you're out there watching this, hit me up. I am the <laughs> channel for you. <laughs> It sounds also, like it. yeah. This yeah. is the American veteran. Of Listen, I am an OG. You have no idea what I went through. How many hours I've spent at the library with all the different characters that I had no idea what the heck they were because nothing was in subtitled. Researching that at the library to figure out one what the heck I was listening to, <laughs> and where to find it to buy it, which I actually found a place to buy and purchase it back in the day when they still did CODs in the mail. <laughs> oh, that's, yes. Children these days have no idea how easy they have it. <laughs> so, so, so starting out, AOLs. since you were Frisbees. new in it, what, what? were okay. your first go-to anime stuff? Oh, in the 80s, besides Voltron, I used to watch all the stuff back in the day. There were a couple of channels that actually played some of like the fairy tale and like the Wizard of Oz and like Simba. Or not Simba, Kimba back in the day. They would play those on TV, that was in the 80s. And then uh, getting to like the mid 80s, they would play 80s, 90s, they would play like Bubblegum Crisis and Venus Wars, Akira, Rojan Z, they would play those on TV. And then 
I want to say 92 was huge because that's when my bro and I discovered regular Dragon Ball. I mean, he would watch <laughs> Super Monkey Ball, WMAC Masters, and Dragon Ball every Saturday. And then we just got big into that and just branched off from there. Yeah. Hell yeah. I know. It was great. And then uh, we would go to, so, because comic shops weren't a thing. So we were big into sports cards at the time. Yeah, I know. We had our own backyard wrestling group, which got violent. Uh, <laughs> We would go to sports card shows looking for sports cards, and a couple of vendors would start doing um, comics. And then in comics, there was two vendors that would sell anime, and they would sell like the Japanese games, like uh, Super Nintendo, uh, PlayStation. Game so we had all the Japanese games of like Dragon Ball way back in the day, and that's what my bro and I were playing. Yeah, but yeah, that's a so we kind of got into it, and then kind of just blew up really after like around two thousand tsunami hit and then i was like everywhere so yeah yeah um it was very here in the south it was very niche still up until 2013 and one punch man and attack on titan hit the scene at the same say, time where i am in the south like south alabama north florida attack on titan was the first one i saw like regular folk check out like, <laughs> yeah. in, in my youth group, like no one watched like like maybe a couple of us watched anime and stuff mm -hmm. like death note and stuff like that but attack on titan that first season was the first time i heard like this random girl who never watched anime mm -hmm. she watched it and like like that sort of thing like that was the first time i saw it really boom because, like, yes, Dragon Ball was, like, big. Dragon Ball Z, that's how, like, me, yeah. like me and my brother watched it on Toonami back when it aired on there and stuff. Yes. And then, like, some of some of our guy friends watched it as well. But aside from that, it, it's, like, anything else that was on Toonami is 50-50, whether your friend watched it or not, like Inuasha or... or uh, what else came on on Toonami? You Yu Hakusho, can only show of... Cowboy Bebop, Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, Outlaw yeah. Star. It was a lot of stuff. I have all of that on my shelf back there. That's some good stuff. Yeah, Yu Yu Hakusho <laughs> was a big one for me and my brother. But yeah, it was one of those things where like at that point, it was already niche. This is like mid-2000s. It's mm -hmm. already niche. Most people like oh, it's super niche, but you can't just go to a random person and be like, hey, do you know Dragon Ball? Right. But to go even nicher was like, even though they are big shows, Inuasha, Yu Hakusho, like you find maybe one person in a school collective where it's like, oh yeah, we're we're on the same page on this. Uh, exactly. Um, I uh, I mean, I had a bad taste put in my mouth. I think I told Katie this last time, um, but I was introdu introduced. Uh, I mean, you know, I watched Pokemon. Um, I had seen Dragon Ball. I was into Yu-Gi-Oh. I had watched though uh, on Toonami one night. Bo 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 bo. bo. Oh, <laughs> that was one of the first ones I thought of when I was trying to name names. I was like, no, don't name that one. <laughs> My friend yeah. Mark loved that show. And I was like, this is the weirdest uh, one. I, I can't make it through this episode. I yes. don't watch this. <laughs> I gotta in. check it out again eventually, but I remember it being so stupid. And I love stupid <laughs> stuff. Don't get me wrong. I love stupid movies. Okay, I have a whole wall dedicated to nothing but the cheesiest of the cheesiest horror movies. I will get through that. I have such a hard time watching One Piece just because the art style. I just, I, I can't. It doesn't suck me in like all the rest <laughs> of the art styles. Like I'm like, oh, but yeah. One of these days. I will watch it and I will binge the whole thing because I am not a quitter. <laughs> no matter how bad something is, I will watch it to the end. <laughs> that that might be a 2000 episode trek by the end of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It might be. I mean, what are they at? Like a thousand something or other mm -hmm. right now? Yeah. yeah. Listen, That's the thing is like... I'm up for uh, a challenge. I'm sure it'll be... If you stick with it so long, it will have to be one of your favorite shows of all time. My issue is like the commitment to that. Like mm -hmm. that's yeah. two, maybe three years of my life, probably. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I don't that's, know if I can do that. I was just lot, thinking yeah. about the uh, the is like 
do a one piece fasting challenge. You can't eat until you've watched all of <laughs> somebody oh, has I'm done that. There's a, that's actually a thing. People oh, have really? done that. Yeah, yeah. They they do a YouTube thing where they start it and they figure out how fast or how long they can watch it. Not the not even doing the skipper the filler skippers either. Mm. The whole kit and caboodle. They it's on YouTube. Theme song. To, yeah. Recap. Listen, I'm telling you right now. Uh, if you're not, if you're watching anime, you best be watching the opening and ending things. I'm telling you, that's the how you watch anime. No skipping here. You gotta watch it. I, you know, VCR. <laughs> how I grew up. I'm skipping. I'm Ooh, skipping one piece. Ooh. Recaps and <laughs> and theme songs every time. I've no, got no, you, you can't. You can't <laughs> skip the dub theme song. The one where it's like a. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a rap almost. I'm trying to remember. Oh, that's the piece. four kids one. It's a yayo, 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 yayo. yayo. <laughs> dream it. Oh, oh. Don't give it up. <laughs> dream I was it. singing that in the comic book shop today, and <laughs> Janelle was like, What the hell are you singing? I'm like, it's it's a very specific thing, okay? <laughs> And the song goes hard, let me tell you. I will to this day sing Head Chala anytime I want or the Rama theme song. <laughs> Just out of the blue. I'll combine them at one point, yes. Here's yeah. the thing. Dragon Ball GT catches a lot of flack. I'll, I'll also throw some flack in there. Yeah. But the theme song, I really like the theme song. It's, it's American. It's rap. But I like the Dragon Ball GT theme song. It's, it's such a classic song. When you hear it, you just put a smile on your face. You're like, these are the times of my life. Yes, yes. The good old days. Yeah, exactly. Where the whole first season is the most boring thing ever. Because here's the thing, I love Dragon Ball. I love the adventure of the original yeah. Dragon Ball. Like it's it's very different than Dragon Ball Z. I love the adventure aspect of that. Dragon Ball GT tries to do that, but it's so boring. The first season of that adventure yeah. is so boring. I I miss the OG Dragon Ball compared to Dragon Ball Z or any other ones. They had the weird characters. They had adventure. They had some wackadoodle stuff happening. So when you watch like the G's, whatever, any of those other ones, they're missing all of those characters. They had like pig dudes yeah. running around out of nowhere. It's like, wh why? I don't know. I would, I would at least say this. <clears throat> Reading the mangas back before, I haven't read all of Dragon Ball manga yeah. slash Dragon Ball Z manga, however you want to phrase it. But reading the manga the dragon ball era is so much it's it's so much more enjoyable than reading yeah. the dragon ball z era yes like like it, it's it's a lot funnier as well like yes there's comedy in dragon ball z but original dragon ball has some good humor in it It has humor but also has adult humor in it yes, it's weird yeah. for a kid's show <laughs> I, I'm listening in from a from afar. I'm I'm not a, a Dragon Ball consumer. It's uh, okay. That's okay. Uh, I think I was more into it because of my bro. That's probably why. Because we would fight each other and watch Honestly, it at the same I, time. So I, I've talked about this with Tio before. With Dragon Ball Z, specifically Dragon Ball Z, and maybe Dragon Ball as well. But I might put that to the side. With Dragon Ball Z specifically, I don't know if you can like get into it later in life i think it's mm. one of those things where like you were introduced to it at a younger age and right. kind of grew up with it i i'm sure there are people out there but i can't imagine a lot of people who are 30 35 mm -hmm. watching dragon ball z for the first time and being like this is my this is my identity <laughs> this is now. Thing. <laughs> a lot of screaming. Like I think it might be the most yeah. screaming I've ever seen in a series. <laughs> I know that throws yeah. a lot of people off, but yeah, you had it. It was, it was a different time back then when you were younger. You were watching. It, you're like, ah, oh, this is amazing. Now you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is not like any cartoon I've ever seen. You know. Yeah, uh, I actually sat through, what is it, the Malaysian or the Filipino Dragon Ball live action in the 90s. I can't even tell you how many times I've watched that. It makes zero <laughs> sense, but it is a beloved film. <laughs> that sounds, I that sounds like that. a watch party. I'm sure it's better than Evolution. As long as it's better than yes, Evolution. Yes, it makes no sense, but yes, it's far better <laughs> than Evolution. Uh, we were listening to uh, um, your guest yesterday. Uh that did Icarus um, or the Calvin. Yes. Yeah. Um, he was so right. He was so right about the uh, Alita. 
I thought they did a phenomenal job with battling yes. Alita, and I thought they did a phenomenal job with uh, with Ghost in the Shell. Um, I love those I mean, movies. There, I I think that obviously there are parts that you can pick out and be like, well, they 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 tried to make it for for a west more for a Western audience and and Americanize this and that. But as somebody who watched both of those things before I went to go watch the movies, like I was like, okay, before I watch these movies. I really want to experience these original forms of it as an anime. Um, and honestly, Ghost in the Shell was just so, I don't know if it was just I too late at night, 3 a.m. watching it, and it and I wasn't cognitively into it, or if it just went over my head, or if I just kind of, or I don't know, was genuinely bored by it, but I was like, this is this is pretty you know there's some cool visuals there's some cool here there's oh that's cool but like uh, overall i wasn't all that impressed with it <laughs> i was like i don't know why everybody really enjoys this i mean it's not bad but i don't know why it's, it's this cult classic like cowboy bebop was you know yeah i think for the time when it came out like you're talking like 90s and the other like mm -hmm. let's say you were up against dragon ball at the time it was such a stark difference from dragon ball to <laughs> any either one of those that you're like wow People this is fascinating anything sort of mm -hmm. thing yeah and then it was kind of popular too because like blade runner ish was around at oh, yeah, the time yeah, yeah. so you were watching that and you're watching that and you're like this is so cool which also <laughs> helps it in a live action because it's kind of fantasy based but also like humanoid based so that can work in any time frame really but when you're thinking like futuristic that's the what it's gonna translate better on like a film because you can get away with stuff like that especially like even a lot of stuff total recall all that fun stuff has happened back in the day that you could really do way more cool things with nowadays with all the technology and stuff but mm -hmm. um, i think that why that's why those two kind of really work more than like let's say dragon ball <laughs> because they're trying to do more of the cgi stuff when it, you, you really you, people really need to like let go of the cgi and go back to practical effects uh yes and tr i i don't know i am so super into practical effects i love that and i think there's something endearing about that especially when you watch movies from like the early 80s like there was no computer technology mm -hmm. back then you know yeah. there were you know a little bit of weird stuff here or there with filming but uh no they had a hand do all that by hand and that's such a craftsmanship that you have to do that and I think because of that, like you get drawn into the that kind of film more. It makes it feel real. I was gonna say, even some of the stuff that like <clears throat> doesn't age as well in terms of the practical effects, like you still do appreciate it. Like like people are gonna I don't think anyone who's listening to here will come at me for this, but people have come at me for this before. <laughs> I think a new hope is better than Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Um I, I personally like a new hope more, but with the the empire strikes back there's more scenes that i appreciate but are a little dated today but i do enjoy it like the AT-ATs when they're walking it, it's it's yeah. stop motion it, but i really like that it's like oh uh -huh. that's like the, the craftsmanship as well as like oh that's so cute to imagine it's just a miniature that <laughs> people are just puppeting and, and stuff like uh i i like that and then the tim burton stuff like like a lot oh. of the stuff he's done with with stop mm -hmm. motion, like I don't know, I, I like I like that stuff even if it turns some people off because I think it's like what you you said, Katie, is like even though sometimes it can look a little off or a little weird, it feels more real than CGI. Right, a yeah. lot of times it does. Um, I'll I'll take weird some of the weird stuff in the original nightmare on elm street where freddy's <laughs> stretching his arms out and it, yes. it it's clearly just yes. these tubes that are stretching <laughs> and it doesn't even match the arm but no. i'll take that yeah. because my excuse for it is it's a dream it can yeah. be stupid and weird like it yeah. can look off clearly it's off but i just chalk that up to it's a dream like, yeah and you know what's amazing about the Star Wars movies too? Because we watch the original ones before they went back and re-edited it like a hundred times. You can clock the edits now because of how dated that technology was. So when you go back and watch it, like 
the CGI is not as crisp as it, sh it, it could be today. So even when you're watching some of the newer Marvel stuff, it looks like it was made back in those 90s. Yep. Because they cut so back and they try to do so many things at once that they're not really going and working on details and quality. But that's what kind of it looks like now the days is just that weird 90s oddball. Like you could point it out to a film like the, the, the Modoc face. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the thing is I, I will say there are some <clears throat> movies with amazing CGI. Like like Al, oh, Al yeah. Chalk, there's a lot of practical effects in this. But Al Chalk, Dune Part 2 up to some of the best yeah. CGI I've seen in yeah. modern days because they took time on it. But like you said, a lot of the recent Marvel movies, they're rushing these VFX departments yes. to where it's you get Modoc face. Yeah. You get uh uh the kid appearing to Thor and he's like Thor help us. And it looks <laughs> yeah. Awful. You get that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh and that's another thing too like uh cuz James Cameron he also made, you know, Terminator and the Alita movies and then he also made like the Avatar stuff. And you could tell he takes uh, pride in the effects and the quality of stuff that he puts in his movie. So he'll spend like three, four years making a film. That's why it looks amazing. And then that's why Marvel, they're, they're just rushing too much stuff and quality is definitely subpar now. For oh, sure. Yeah. I've, I've just been, <clears throat> I've always been a, a stand for, for the practical effects. If, if anybody could like do it, you know, and bring it back, the the Hellboy with the Hellhounds, yes, where they had those things walking around in suits and they opened the mouth. Oh my gosh, that they made it look so good, and especially yeah. back then, like especially oh. when it came out, um, I was just enamored with with how that was so convincing. Yes, um, yeah, Hellboy Two is one of my favorite movies of all time because of the night market scene and then that little gobliny doodad and then the angel of death oh i love it so good uh those are my favorite yeah, i've got to rewatch like, that i i've rewatched it you know like five or ten times but that was like 15 years ago oh. i'm sorry brandon go ahead no no you're good like, <laughs> it, it it ties in kind of with what you're <laughs> talking about of guillermo can't even pronounce his name right now guillermo del toro exhausted yes. right now butchered it <laughs> but he is someone who still maintains practical effects like like yes. yes there is some cgi here and there sometimes um but it's usually not too bad uh i saw that with his horror anthology he had a few years ago on netflix <clears throat> looks great a lot of the stuff looks great and then with weird creature designs and stuff like that mm -hmm. you mentioned hellboy the first thing that pops in my mind is pan's labyrinth the not not just the yeah. not just that yeah. but also the goat man like like all yes. that sort of yeah. stuff like so good modern day they would just they they put the dots on the person's face yeah and then yeah. All right, the rest of you we're just going to cgi we're going to mocap you and the rest will be cgi mm -hmm. um, yeah. which can look good for a plan of the apes movie but everything else doesn't look good. <laughs> um, it can look good for a, a a Red Dead Redemption game, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thought of game. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, I, I I like that stuff, and, and yeah. like I said, even when it doesn't look great, like with some of the Nightmare on Elm Street stuff, I'll take that over some of the bad CGI in the remake of nightmare on elm street the oh, yeah. one. that one's not bad it's just some of the green screen and cgi is not good <laughs> for sure yeah all right uh so katie what are you into right now what's your big thing you're into uh i'm recently getting back into art which i love and i finally finished the the my pet roscoe so get a break from sewing for a bit um but right now, just weird horror stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also really big into picking out the dumbest of the dumbest comics and back issue bins. Uh, I, I might have an obsession with Ninja Samurai animal books, <laughs> not turtles, but just <laughs> my most recent required is uh, issues one through three of Samurai Cat, which is fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah. You, know, you have to send us... Uh 
that. I haven't seen Samurai Cat. Okay, Samurai Squirrel, Samurai Squirrel, Samurai Penguin, Samurai Cat go hard. I've not <laughs> heard of this until now. <laughs> it's amazing. It doesn't, it's amazing. It doesn't yeah. have Samurai in the name, but have you checked out or heard of Boris the Bear? Yes. I really want to read that so badly. Yeah. Um uh, Austin, it was one of the first uh, uh, Dark Horse books. I think it was the second Dark Horse title to ever come out. It was like in 86. But I, I love the concept because it's the creator of Dark Horse who is just creating this character that kills all of the popular things in pop culture at that time. At least that's what the starting issues are. Is like the first issue is I think he's killing the Mutant Ninja, Tur the Team Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I think that's the first issue. Yeah. Um, then it goes to like Power Ranger slash Voltron stuff. Then it goes to this. It goes to that. And then there is a story that weaves in and out. But uh, those those early indie s stages of of parody slash crapping on what was popular at the yes. time. Yeah. Kind of like that sort of stuff. Oh, it's amazing. So <laughs> in is issue three. Uh, issue two, so in Samurai Cat, issue two makes fun of Conan, and issue three is full on Star Wars. It's amazing. It's <laughs> so good. Yeah, I'll have to pull it out and show you guys what happens. I was going through that the other day. It was just fantastic. Yeah. That's, Samurai uh, Cat. Yeah. So, up. yeah, that's where that's where my heart lies in crappy, weird <laughs> books <laughs> from the past. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was introduced yeah. to something uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, called fuck fairyland and it's not something it, this could have been out yes. for a long time and I've, yeah. I've never heard of it oh yeah um so that that's an interesting concept to just kind of bring like disney into dark like yes settings like a, it's a whole new disney adventure horror <laughs> like <laughs> have oh, you started awesome. reading it yet i read the I don't know what number issued. I went to the Green Bros and uh, they were um, they were like, "Oh, he, have you read this?" And they just gave me an issue number, whatever. And I was like, "Okay, yeah. I'll read it." <laughs> uh, some of my favorite Scotty work is in is in the fuck the F Fairy Land books. I agree. I I like the the it's got the various titles. I hate Fairy Land. Then it does transition to that. By like issue six or ten yeah. or something, I can't remember. But I, I agree, Katie. I think it's my favorite Scotty Young work because, yes, it is like the cutesy style that he has, but it's not all chibi stuff. I love his chibi yes. stuff. Don't get me wrong. I just think oh, it's yeah. oversaturated with how much covers and stuff we have of that. Yeah. Where I do love seeing these type of interiors from Scotty Young, and oh, it's, it's I love yes. the story as well. The, the other one that I, the style that I wish he would go back, because if you go back and look at early Scotty art, he has so many different styles of art. His other style of art that I really adore is the stuff that he did for Oz. That series. Mm. It's so yeah, good. It's so good. Right yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that one's really good. And uh, I have to go back and get the updated, like I have them, but I haven't read them for the new series for Fairyland. It was like, yeah, like last my... year or the year before. Yeah. I, I've only read like the stuff that was originally collected issues one through 20. I haven't yeah. read the new stuff yet. Yeah. It looks good. So I'm, I'm excited about that one. I'm yes. always reminded that I'm in order, inordinately, uh, uncultured uh, <laughs> <laughs> by, uh, by Robbie, by my girlfriend, by you guys. I've <laughs> no, There's I think it's so one of those I things where like like we each have our own individual passions, and then it it can also branch off from that. It can be subcategories or other things, but I think like each of us individually as geeks, not just us three, but geeks as a whole, have something that you're focus on as a geek and then mm -hmm. there's subcategories here and there and you might be super knowledgeable or or like this or whatever but then someone brings up this other thing and you're like i'm just a baby i don't know what you're <laughs> yeah. talking about <laughs> like that that's me with like like uh a lot of the anime stuff like i i do like anime mm -hmm. but i i dip in and out of 
maybe a couple series a year sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, well, I'm, I mean, I'm a baby with that. I'm really not into like as much as I used to be. Uh, I want to watch like the popular ones, but I keep noticing the popular ones are just kind of like, you know, I watch them and then they're over and then I'm like, I don't feel any different <laughs> than I did. You know, they're, it's like, for example, um, uh, Demon Slayer. I watched the first 12 episodes of that and I was like, I have a feeling I know exactly where this road goes because I watched Fairy Tale. I've watched Black Clover. I've watched, um, you know, this, that, and the other shonen kind of anime. I don't, I don't really want to follow this road, you know, like that's kind of the pro and con with shonen as a whole, at mm-hmm. least for me, like, like when I dip in and out of anime, like <clears throat> a lot of the popular ones I'm so, so on. I remember demon slayer. I haven't watched the show, but I read half the manga. I read to like chapter a yeah. hundred or something. And for the most part, average shonen. But the thing that, boosted it a little bit for me was the whole like whenever a demon is killed how he's like like essentially sitting there with them and like if you've played assassin's creed ever it's like the uh requiesca de pace like like the rest in peace moment that he has with the demons Mm. and Mm -hmm. it's very heartfelt i like those moments aside from that average shonen average manga sort of thing then it got to a territory that i did not like at all where spoiler not really a spoiler <clears throat> it's revealed in like chapter 90 or 100 something where like his dad had this special technique that only his dad knew and mm-hmm. now he's the last one that will figure it out i don't like that in anime yeah. a lot of time where it's like the power within i was a loser i was this <laughs> nerdy <laughs> stupid little loser 10 years ago Mm -hmm. but i have this one thing that no one else has Mm -hmm. and now i'm a god i don't like that that yeah weird writing tool there yeah it's that is really popular in shonen animes like that whole oh yeah i I was nothing now i'm the greatest type situation you know i I, (laughs) i'm so passionate about attack on titan and uh, I was talking to some of my friends like back when it had come come out and it was like in the season two or something. And one of my friends was like, yeah, I was watching it. It was really interesting, really cool. And then Aaron comes out of that Titan and I'm like, of course, he's the one. He's the one powerful one. And I was like, no, no, it's different. It's different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'd say that one is um, <laughs> But, you know, I'm. In, I'm in the same vein, though. There's, for me, it's like, of, of course they have this thing about them that does, this one special thing, and, um, and I'm just so I'm so over that being being the writing tool. Uh, but, um, Chainsaw Man was really fun. That was a really yeah. fun anime to watch. Uh, uh, Spy Family has been hilarious. I love Spy Family. Uh, but, um. There's just some, you know, there's a there's a few tropes in it. And it's like, I don't think every anime is not always going to get away or get out of having tropes in it. Um, But uh, I guess that's why I was just so drawn to to Attack on Titan. Um, And I think Cowboy Bebop, you know, really evades a lot of trope. It's a very just new story in that medium and that's what I love. Uh, it's and, really well done. Yeah. So I, I'm not really all that well cultured and and ingesting just lots of anime and and finding because I know that there's some gems out there. Yeah. Um, but I, I haven't. Now World of Warcraft. <laughs> 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 I know way too much about World of Warcraft. <laughs> that's that's a geek thing that I don't know who else is into. Uh, um, yeah. Like, w- yeah, we know. Uh, so. Yeah, because that's one thing I do. I'll go in and out of either comics 
novels, gaming, <laughs> uh, just random other things that I do and I'll kind of rotate. So I recently came back to manga like last year and I heavily, heavily got into manhwas from Korea that are all about truckside. <laughs> uh, you know, um, sending somebody into a villainess slash dukedom slash princess thing where they live out the villainess fantasies. That's where I'm at right now. I, and I never in my life thought I would read any of those and I probably binged all of them since last year. <laughs> <laughs> it's so That's stupid, like, I, but you're like, this is great. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't read webtoons in at least a year. <clears throat> oh. but I remember when I, yeah. when I went it, for my specific taste, there were a couple of the, the romance ones that weren't bad. The thing is, yeah. that's so many of webtoon, and it's, yeah. it's not so it's many. Not yeah, thing, to where I had to dig for the stuff that I would probably like, yeah. and there were there's some stuff that like is like top ten, top twenty material in terms of comics, manga, yes. manga, like 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 almost anything Carnby Kim does, like Bastard, Sweet Home, uh, uh, his other series are good, not as great. Pig pen is really good, like that type of stuff. The the weird horror oh, stuff, fabulous like horror stuff. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, was it Pumpkin Night? I'm really into that. I love that. The art in that, that sick. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. There's some really good twisted, twisted adult like horror serial killer crime things that are fantastic. That that'll probably never see the light of day in animation or like popularity. But holy hell, there's some good ones. Yeah. Oh, y'all got to give me a list here. I, this, oh, this is, oh, all right. We, we can list you up. Inspiration. Yeah. At yes. least, at least for the Carnby Kim stuff, stick with the Manwa. They, uh, they did recently adapt on Netflix Sweet Home, and it's not bad. Uh, one of my biggest there's a bunch of little issues I have. One of the biggest little issue I have with that show is whoever created the show. And is doing the music for the show loves imagine dragons <laughs> specifically <laughs> one song in particular i can't remember what the song was uh, but in the first like five episodes it plays at least five mm. times this one imagine <laughs> dragon song yeah. and it doesn't you, fit oh, at no. all you already it's got me not wanting to watch it i tell you yeah <laughs> I've heard it yet. The one Imagine Dragon song is the only one I know and I've heard it a billion times. I don't want to hear it anymore, so I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, it, it got me in it. It doesn't story. fit at all. <laughs> it doesn't. That's so weird. Like, how do they get the licensing for that? Let's go. How do? Yeah, let me know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, weird. I think I think Imagine Dragons will do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I don't think they say no to anything ever. Yeah, if, you, if you give us hundred thousand dollars to put our song in, whatever it could be, a porno, we'll do it. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. nice yeah way to go yeah I, that's probably the one song i've probably seen or heard in more movies in the last couple of years that I, it's just in everything it's in commercials movies tv yep. shows yeah it's like i need a break please <laughs> yeah well, imagine dragons makes really good uh laptop commercial music <laughs> if you've seen any laptop commercials you know exactly what i'm talking about <laughs> i don't <laughs> I'll, I'll have to look up laptop commercials, I guess. It's something that, like, I don't know if there's something wrong with my brain, but I <laughs> notice, like, like, like patterns or things that keep happening in different commercials and stuff. Yes. In laptop uh -huh. commercials or, like, Google commercials or, or yeah. any type of tech commercial, there's a specific type of music that they play. <laughs> and Imagine Dragons is 50% of that. <laughs> That's like uh, right. food commercials. They have like the same five songs that they'll play like over and over again. You're like, this was just on a Burger King commercial. Now you're on like a McDonald's Taco Bell commercial. This is insanity. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, so I watch a lot of YouTube. Okay. Um, I'm a huge Windigoon uh fan i will watch hours of windigoon and i will watch hours of this guy called bob gimlin and he's so he's taken the the 
Bob Gimlin name and uses it kind of like a moniker for himself. Bob Gimlin is originally the guy that was like with Patterson and in with Patterson that did the Bigfoot footage. Um, so that's why he kind of took on that name. Um, really, really interesting, like points, really good. Like just if you had to have a persuasive essay that would like a hundred percent convince you Bigfoot is real with no like evidence, evidence, but this Bob Gimlin channel would, would hit that like in every way possible. Part of why um, Austin is mentioning this is I think last week <clears throat> when we aired, I was talking about Bigfoot some, and <laughs> and part of what I had said was was evidence or not, I I'm indifferent on Bigfoot, like like Bigfoot <laughs> out of out of all the cryptids is most likely, but it's the one I'm least interested in. I want the <laughs> weird ones. Right, Mark man, let's go. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm I'm swelling this because I was like it. It's a uh, it's it's one of those avenues that I can be familiar with. If, if you guys are familiar with, um, not just Bigfoot, but like YouTube. Um, so, but Wendigoon has has gone over like liminal spaces, like the back rooms and those kind of ARGs and those different kinds of horror. Um, are you got are you guys uh, familiar? With, with this stuff not just uh, with wendigoon but i i like I, i've watched some of a decent bit of his stuff but like uh i like weird horror i like that one mm -hmm. guy i can't remember his name but he i think he's stopped because he's making an actual a24 movie based on this but the guy who was making like the back room videos oh they the got, got like tens of millions of dot or tens of millions of views each one where yeah. it's like people exploring the back rooms with mm -hmm. the uh, first person camera view a24 um, got him they got him oh, to wow. make a back rooms oh, movie man. i have no idea what that's going to look wow. like but um are you at all familiar i uh, don't know the names of those but i know the a24 and i know some of like the back room weird type of mm -hmm. horror cuz i i watched a lot of weird oddball stuff <laughs> i'm into all of that weird stuff uh found footage is actually really fun i like that I, i'm trying to remember the name of one of them but if you uh, if you find names you link me like i'll link you anime and weird uh, <laughs> titles uh one of them popping up right now uh the uh angel hair um Wendigoon goes over this uh, analog. Another one's called analog. It's a analog horror um, where this dude basically kind of goes back to his old recordings, his old video recordings of this like Christian cartoon that he used to w watch. One of those few that he was allowed to see, and and uh, and he was like comparing it to like a real like VHS like copy of the cartoon, and he was like, "There's something weird going on." because his recordings the character would talk directly to him as a child but he didn't understand that that was weird you know so oh, he just that's, he grew. that's just a part of this is what tv is right like yeah. you know it was it was very much in the vein of like a dora kind of thing where what's your name and then <laughs> they wait and then they go that's a good name you know so but this one was very specific like it would it's very specific and then they were like okay now what you want to do is uh now that he's gone you want to go to your room and you want to put that to be safe in the armor of god you want to put that chair up against the the um the door handle so that way uh that door will stay very stout it's like so weird to like think about yeah, you want to get that the rope Get yeah <laughs> throw it over the ceiling fan um but angel hair is is uh that now i think it gets a little off the rails as it goes but um really really cool concept i'm trying to think of what the other one is the, it's like the f first um you know, let me uh, put in analog horror with the first 
because uh, I can't remember. It's called, it's like the first recording or the first something, but like that same guy that did the back rooms, he's going into the woods and he's like, look, look what I found, guys. He's like, there's a hole in the ground and through the hole, you could see a perfect set of staircases. So he's like, uh, I'm going to go back uh, and it, the next day, and he's like vlogging this. So it seems very much like a vlog and he's like, I'm going to go uh explore it like you guys really wanted me to explore it so i'm gonna go explore it and then he goes and he gets in and just astounding effects because he is in the woods and he has made the effect of him getting down in this hole and he's in this very long staircase that's just Ooh. going down 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 and i think he records going down it a certain way and then he's like okay guys i'm not gonna go down it all the way today we'll come back tomorrow or something but he goes all the way down it, and um, then he ends up in this big, empty mall. So it was based off a real mall that was deserted. I think I've seen those. But, yeah. but it was, uh, he's now uh, in uh, a very abandoned underground mall. It's like <laughs> a very strange sense of, of isolation. Um, but you God, said this is remember. the same guy that did the back room stuff. I'm pretty sure. What's that wild cool. about this guy is <clears throat> I think he's 24 years old. And it just it, it just like blows my mind. Like like people I'm I'm not that far removed from 24. <laughs> I'm only a couple couple years <laughs> past that. But like like someone that young because it's not like he started out at 24 doing that backrooms content that was like mm -hmm. a few years ago right. right like he's 19 20 years old wow. doing all that vfx stuff like mm -hmm. like it's crazy insane to see i i love that stuff though of, of uh these creators like like youtubers and stuff making this weird stuff and then I mean, A24 picks them up for something, some sort of backroom stuff. Another thing I really like with like YouTubers getting recognized or picked up is, uh, have either of y'all seen Talk to Me? The yes. horror movie that came out last Not year? Yet. Yes. No. It's made by the Raka Raka guys. And I remember watching their stuff here and there growing up. It's it's stupid content, but it, it, it was fun. They, they're good at stunts and stuff. A lot mm -hmm. of times it'd be like, fighting ronald mcdonald or whatever <laughs> it's just over the top stunts they're destroying a house like like throwing people through drywall sort of stuff they're great at stunts nice. but then they make this horror movie that was my favorite horror movie of last year like i love mm -hmm. talk to me it's 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 real it's good. a, it's so a good. welcome fresh air when it comes to <laughs> possession stuff because mm -hmm. i am so burnt out and tired of possession stuff like yeah if it has anything to do with ghost or possession or anything like that like automatically it's negative for me and so yeah. if, it's, if it's an average movie or like eh, it was, was kind of good i'm probably still not going to see it because i just don't care about possession stuff right now i'm so burnt out on like the paranormal activity stuff even though i really like that but i'm really burnt out on Same, that yeah yeah that's the thing is i I liked the paranormal activity stuff. And I still do. Like I still yeah. like to go back and watch some of those, but I know this one's very different and it was probably a different script or something. I tried watching uh, next of kin that one they mm. made like three years ago. Yeah. I just couldn't get through it. Cause I think it's probably part of that burnout where it's yeah. like, uh, yeah. like if, if this was, if this came out back in 2012 or whatever, I probably love this and want to keep going at it, but I I have better stuff I could use now and have <laughs> yeah. with better movies at least. That's yeah. that's something as a creator that I've uh, noticed that you know I don't I play Mario Kart pretty much right now <laughs> in, in in some spare time. It's the best game where I was like I kind of get into a competitive itch. I can relatively turn my brain off, and oh. and it just kind of puts me it's really good at like bracketing you with like staying in like a competitive range with people. Uh -huh. And I just play, you know, it's like, I just, 
pop in Mario Kart, get online, play some, done. Um, but mm-hmm. I used to, you know, role play for hours and hours on World of Warcraft and on Final Fantasy fourteen. Um, and I missed that, but I got a lot of writing chops from that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was playing Elden Ring for a while, but every time, uh, but I've got into, vi- I've got out of video games last year for this comic project and, um, or for other things that I need to do when I get home, I work out or got live stuff to do. And, um, I've noticed that as a comic creator, I'm kind of like, I've got better things to do than do X, Y, Z watch this movie or watch this anime or something, you know? Um, well, it's, it's all a balance of time. Like, cause that's, that's what it was mm-hmm. for me with getting into <clears throat> writing and comics uh, a few years ago and stuff and being more serious about it and taking a lot of time to just continually try to get better and better at it. Like, one of the first things that I had to kind of push out of my life, not entirely push out, but like lessen the amount I did was video games. That was like one of the first things. Cause I mean, high school and early college, I invested so (laughs) much time into video games. I remember Elden Scrolls online (laughs) came out and me (laughs) and one of my church buddies, basically as soon as I got back from college class and, and he got out of his college class, for every day of a week for like three months, we would play at least six to seven hours a day. Yeah. Every day for three months, we were doing that. I was um, nine playing. So I got into Blue, RuneScape. I played played RuneScape for hours. When Wrath of the Lich King for World of Warcraft came out, I had my buddy. I was like, man, I cannot get to the store because I've got school. <laughs> And I don't have a car and like I have to get dropped off. And, you know, my mom's not going to take me to go to the store this early in the morning and get a copy of a game that I can't play until I get home. Um, but, it, you know, it could be sold out. So, why don't, buddy, can you go get this game for me? <laughs> and he came <laughs> to my art class and, and he came in walking slow with the copy of <laughs> Wrath of the Lich King. And I was like, oh, and I like knelt down. And and it was like he was knighting me with the, <laughs> with the game. And I held my hands out, <laughs> and, he, and he bestowed Wrath of the Lich King to me. <laughs> and nice. It's just hours and hours of of playing uh, these these video games. But you know, they're, they're, I can't. You know, my my parents and especially my dad was like, "This is just a." waste of time you're not going to do anything with whatever you're doing in here like in this Mm -hmm. virtual world but at the same time i've had so much inspiration and so much you drive from from these things uh as a storytelling method or as a you know stress relief or that kind of thing yeah uh I th- if you if I were to turn my Steam on right now, which I've had <laughs> a long time, I think the number one game that I have hours on is Trove. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Don't know why. Know. It was just so good. It's right around bobbing stuff. <laughs> it's amazing. It's yeah. what? Trove. It's kind of like my yeah. It's kind of like Minecraftish. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. <laughs> also Rift. Rift as well. Yeah. Those yeah. Some good times, but. I, I love the Mario Kart. It's one of the main things that I was playing that in Fortnite and Overwatch, but I stopped gaming for a while because just so much crap happened to me like last year. And then now that uh, like may or may not be losing my job at the end of the month because we're either downsizing or closing the office. I, I want to get back to gaming a little bit, but I want to mostly focus on art and comic creating. Cause that's something that I want to mm-hmm. do for a very long time. Yeah. Yep. Listen to Comic Lab. Me and me and Brandon have have given our uh, our thumbs up on that one. You want to get into creating comics? They're they're a great place to start. Perfect. Yeah, I'm trying to think of because I feel like there's more. I mean, Comic Lab, and then like uh, I I was about to say I don't listen to them as much nowadays. There's a reason why, but I was about to say uh, Comics Cafe or Cartoonist mm-hmm. Cafe. Cartoonist like, Cafe. I, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, even going back and, and listening to that stuff, like, yeah. it's always good. I've learned a lot through that. Um, yeah, there, there's, I guess, yeah, I guess Comic Lab is probably the number one one for me. That was, that was one of the early ones <clears throat> when I started writing that I started listening to and, and helping out with, uh, with just the ins and outs of, of the industry or whatever mm-hmm. you want to say. And then, yeah. Uh, learning more about comics and all that kind of took time away from video game stuff. That's a thing. I would love to go. I would love to just veg out right now. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some video games, man. I'm telling you. Veg like, out. <laughs> like I, I love the Gears of War oh. games. I would love to just yes. like, sit down right now and, nice. and play through yeah. all of them right now. Um, uh-huh. Again, like for the 10,000th time. <laughs> Um, or just simply like going back and playing like the pretty much the only games I get nowadays, um, which is not a lot, but it's the 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 developers that made Until Dawn and The Quarry. They're like horror uh, uh, choice games. It's not mm-hmm. a, it's not a lot of gameplay. It's mostly yes. quick reflex, like the atmospheric stuff. misty type stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like I I really like that stuff and like the butterfly effect type stuff where it's like, oh, like you could yeah. live all of the characters could live at the end, or you could suck at, at making decisions <laughs> and they all died. Or the one you hated <laughs> the most is the one that lived. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah. I think the game that started that all for a lot of people was Oregon Trail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You never oh, know yeah. what was going to happen. It was horrific at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah, I played a, a decent bit of Oregon Trail. Uh, i trying to think if it was... It was at a friend's house a decent bit. But I also remember playing it at school some. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, the days that you would walk into computer class and you're like, no, we're playing Carbon San Diego and Oregon Trail. You're like, yes! <laughs> yes! Let's go! Yeah. That was the best of times. All right, guys, it's an hour and a half in. Uh, do we have any closing remarks, closing ideas, anything we want to mention, anything we want to talk about before we call bring this recording to a close? Mm-hmm. I think we're all going to have to play Mario Kart sometime and trash yes. talk like no other uh, <laughs> sometime soon. <laughs> yes, that would be fun because... Um, I'm I'm kind of disappointed I don't have like a mic option in Mario Kart because I can only I imagine the trash talking. Uh, either Discord only... or Instagram calls. That's what me and my cart group people do. So. Uh, okay. I feel like I've had Way a lot more that. trash talking when it came to uh, Smash Bros. That, <laughs> that's the one I've, I've had like the most trash talking and like oh it, 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 it's not just trash talking like, like cart like mad where it's like oh, oh of course you pick kirby of it's course serious you it's knew, serious you piece of crap. <laughs> turn on blue shells only oh, oh <laughs> you can stuff do that gonna come forth out of your- <laughs> yes you can yeah, you could do bombs only. You could do reverse Man. mode. You could do all kinds of fun stuff uh, in there and really anger your friends. I know. Yeah, it's I, amazing. I, well, <laughs> I get really angry when just consecutive things misfortunately happen to me. It's not like people are really aiming at me, but huh. like I will just get, I'm in first. Oh, I got red shelled. Okay. Oh. I'm in fourth. Oh, I got uh, banana. Oh, I'm in, mm-hmm. I'm in eighth. Oh, I got bombed. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm in last place <laughs> yeah no see i'm the one doing that i i don't care about winning i stay mid so i could take everybody out that's how i play the game <laughs> yeah katie stays mid so she can keep getting the good yes. so she can get the mm-hmm. bullet she can get right yeah yeah, yeah. Thing, run but... you over all the time yeah yeah, yeah. you want a banana to your face hole you're getting it yeah <laughs> well it's like i've noticed that if like if i can get in first and stay really in first and try and get like far ahead and always have a banana at my back, I will mm-hmm. stay there mm-hmm. because they're like infighting behind me and it's just progressively getting more and more behind me. But, uh-huh. but I do notice that if I am in like seventh or eighth place, I'm getting better items that I can win with. It's just like, it's so much fun. I know. Uh, and if, 
you've ever played with your foreign friends, my friend Glenn says in a British accent, the most random dumbest things I've ever seen in my entire life. I've never heard the term turnip tips in my life <laughs> until we started playing Mario Kart. And I was like, what is that? He will make us crash into walls just hearing the stuff that comes out of his mouth. And I'm like, what the hell is happening here? This is great. Yeah, I remember when I was younger, the double dash days where oh, I was I so young. Dash. My brother would just be like, okay, you got the back. And like, I loved it though. Cause I, I, you're young, you're getting into video games. You're like, hey, I'm actually playing. Like, it didn't just give me a fake controller. Like, but uh, wait, yeah, I remember that just like every every 30 seconds, I finally get to do something. He gets Aww. a cube. I can also help drift. That's that was about it. <laughs> nice. Uh, All right. Well, it's been wonderful having you with us, Katie. Um, probably have you again in the future uh i'm going to mention my kickstarter i've got a kickstarter going on right now 2024 ends july 11th so if you're watching this after then I'm, you've missed it sorry might be another one next year um but uh it's been awesome having you and uh is there anything else that y'all want to want to plug uh well it's recorded so <laughs> my show's <laughs> about to be over <laughs> uh, however uh i am i did just apply to be monetized on youtube so uh i will be taking all the proceeds from that putting it back into my channel to help back other kickstarters and to you know get more guests and stuff on so that's what i'll be doing with that so. all right that's exciting. awesome i think the only thing i'll plug is it's it's a a publisher trying to do something but i think it could be a game changer for all of comics Mm -hmm. People need to go buy the pocket sized editions. DC is is yeah. Out. It's nine ninety nine. They have Watchmen and Court of Owls right now. The Court of Owls one I'm iffy on because there's an issue where I love the issue. Batman's going crazy, but you have to turn the book and stuff with it. And with the binding, it it's not great. Like, like it's some of the stuff, some of the art gets lost in the book binding. So I'm so, so on the court of owls one. I mentioned this though, because I think this, it isn't the only way, but I think this is a way you get more average people or more manga people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your average, your ad, average Tonkabon volumes, like nine ninety nine, twelve ninety nine. 1299 you need something to compete with them. It's the same size, same cost, and it's a big story for Watchmen. For yeah. Example. Yes. Um, I think DC could do good with this. I'm not saying to support DC in buying these. I'm saying to support the comic industry as a whole. Right. By buying. They'll, they'll <laughs> right. come out with a couple every month, but I think this could be a game changer if they let it last more than two years if they don't see any right profits now. in a year or a year and a half they're gonna be like oh it failed it's like no no you just yeah. have to let it stay on the market a little bit. yeah yeah also they look way sexier on your shelf <laughs> in that <laughs> format do. yeah they really do and also with my bookshelf i have one shelf that is like shorter than the others where i couldn't mm -hmm. fit any trades in <laughs> yeah I can fit these in though <laughs> I, I i feel like that's the size i want envy to be in when it's all said and done you know but yeah yeah i don't know how that's gonna turn out it's, uh i'll show you somebody that does that when we're done with here uh i've had him on before and he does his comic form in that format gotcha i'd say if it. watchmen can do it almost any comic can do it if you yeah. have if you have a book that has nine panels a page nine panels a page and you can still see the art well you can still read it well then almost any other book can do it mm -hmm. i think i've got four rows on one of my pages so <laughs> anyways <laughs> uh this has been um american dismay with k-pop junkie uh I'm Austin Light with American Demon Comics. You can find me over at AmericanDemonComics.com and on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram at American Demon Comics. I'm joined by Brandon Ingram and Katie. Uh, Brandon, why don't you let us know where you're at? 
uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all the social media stuff Austin mm -hmm. mentioned. That's basically <laughs> where you can find me. Um, projects are being created as we speak. Um, there's there's some silence, sadly, that I have to do for now. I'd love to just blah everything, <laughs> but I have to be quiet for now. Well, that's okay. We, we, we're looking forward to the surprise. And Katie, how do you want to uh, make your exit? Hi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am the K-pop underscore junkie everywhere. No E, by the way. Uh, all the places. Come find me. I'm the only comic K-pop channel. <laughs> Non-focus on K-pop out there. Come find me. And uh, shout out to Hot Dog Homies. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Yeah. Thank you for joining me, and I will be talking to you guys later. Bye-bye.